So Robbie's loyalty to Mufasa and her family separated her from all the other lions in the Pride Lands and made her such an unbreakable queen. She was depicted as one of the strongest and fiercest Disney characters ever to grace the big screen, and sadly she gets way less credit than she deserves. So Robbie was not only queen of the Pride Lands during its darkest period, but throughout her entire life she suffered countless hardships. It was only thanks to the strength that she developed during these hard times that she could survive even after she lost everything. And now it's high time that somebody told her whole story. Sarabi was an integral part of the Pride Lands even before she was married to Mufasa, but that doesn't mean that she was always safe and out of danger. The first Lion King film didn't take any time to dig into a lot of the backstories of the elder characters due to its focus on Simba and his friends, but thanks to the popularity of the franchise, the universe has expanded into books, comics, and even puzzles that have helped the best of the best Disney investigators put Sarabi's younger years into perspective. Thanks to original scripts for The Lion King as well as the book Lion King A Tale of Two Brothers, it's been revealed that Sarabi was born in the Pride Lands and lived there her entire life. When she was younger, the territory was under the rule of Mufasa's father, Ahadi. According to the original script, which at the time was titled King of the Jungle, Sarabi was born to a litter that included her and three other lions. However, none of them made it into the final script or cut of the movie. Only one has ever made an appearance, and that was in a Lion King puzzle entitled Happy Families. And even then, it was only in writing that the puzzle explained that one of Simba's best friends, Matoto, was also Sarabi's sister's cub. At one point in Simba's life, he met two new cubs that were also his cousins from Sarabi's side of the family. Though, in the comic, they don't explain whether or not it was the same sibling that was Matoto's mother or not. But Sarabi's family aside, that's not where her strength originated. Whether she was an only child or had an entire litter of siblings, Sarabi's strength came from her life experiences, most of which are believed to have happened alongside Mufasa. According to The Lion King Friends in Need, Sarabi and Mufasa spent a lot of time with each other when they were younger, a lot like their son Simba spent time with his future queen, Nala. In fact, Sarabi was supposedly arranged to marry Mufasa from very early on in their lives. It wasn't all happy stories for the lioness, though. You see, much like her son Simba, Sarabi and Mufasa enjoyed going on unsupervised walks through the Pride Lands, and similar to Simba and Nala again, they rarely got their wish because Zazu was always flying overhead. This would actually end up saving Sarabi's life on multiple occasions, each of which likely helped her build the strength and wisdom that she needed as an adult to become such an unbreakable queen. According to the book Friends in Need, Sarabi found herself in imminent danger when she was suddenly trapped within a gorge being circled by a wake of vultures. Sarabi had tried to get herself out of the pit that she was stuck in, but when she realized that she couldn't do it successfully, she was wise enough to call out for help. After hearing her cries, Zazu quickly rushed to Mufasa and told him of Sarabi's dangerous situation, and Mufasa quickly rushed to her aid. He and Zazu sprang into action and positioned a large fallen log in a way that allowed Sarabi to climb out of the pit unscathed. That wasn't the only time that Zazu helped Sarabi by saving her life and teaching her a valuable lesson. According to the tale Lion King How True Zazu, the hornbill managed to spot a water cobra as it tried sneaking up on the future queen of the Pride Lands and warned Sarabi of its presence. Although Mufasa would have preferred a little more privacy with Sarabi than what he was getting, Sarabi was always shown to be thankful for Zazu because she was smart enough to know that ultimately she needed his help and guidance, and that's part of what made her such an amazing mother and queen. Sarabi was the perfect queen to rule over the Pride Lands, and both Mufasa and his father Ahadi knew that. This is why, when the time came for Ahadi to pass on to the great kingdom in the sky, he made sure that he got to see Sarabi marry his son. And after Sarabi and Mufasa were officially married, they became the king and queen of the Pride Lands. While Mufasa was the governing force and the overall ruler of the Pride and the territory that surrounded them, he would have been nothing without his wise queen. By the beginning of the first movie, Sarabi had solidified herself as the head of the lionesses and used her wisdom and strength to become the leader of the hunting party. And if you remember from the movie, that was a very important position. The circle of life is a very delicate thing, and if lions had overhunted, then the Pride Lands would not have been as lush and as beautiful of a place, much like what happened when Scar allowed the hyenas to hunt as they pleased. This meant that Sarabi had to be extra careful about when, where, and how much she and her fellow lionesses hunted and brought back to their families, and the amazing conditions of the Pride Lands at the beginning of the movie are a perfect showcase of just how great she was at her job as the leader, proving that she truly was a diligent queen. It was it wasn't solely her strength and wisdom that made Sarabi such an amazing leader, though. It was also the fact that she was loyal to her pride and her family above all else. As you know, shortly after they became king and queen, Sarabi and Mufasa had their first and, sadly, their only cub, Simba. And from that moment on, she spent as much time as she could nurturing, cleaning, and raising her son to be a proper lion. Sarabi was shown to be very supportive of Simba, and she always took the time to make sure that her son learned a proper lesson with each experience in his life. This was shown in the movie, but even more so in the story, Simba's 
big secret in which she helped Simba understand that not all secrets are a good thing and that sometimes opening up to others can even go as far as to save lives. For example, after Nala went missing and Simba couldn't tell Sarabi what happened due to it being a secret, his mother explained that sometimes to keep people safe, you need to tell their secrets. And that was yet another way that Sarabi showed how wise she was and that she was ready to pass on that wisdom to the next generation of cubs. Now, Sarabi's true strength was shown to fans in the first movie when she experienced what was undoubtedly the most tragic moment of her entire life. In one fell swoop, Sarabi not only became a widowed queen, but also a mother who believed that she had lost her young and sole child. After Scar killed Mufasa and forced Simba to run away, he returned to the Pride Lands with the news of the king's death, but Sarabi was unshaken. Of course she was upset by the news, but she knew that she needed to be strong for her pride and did her best to keep her head held high. In The Lion King, as soon as Scar took over as the king, he became a very aggressive and volatile leader, so Sarabi knew that she needed to stay strong and steady for her fellow lions. She faced Scar and his pack of hyenas with great posture, and she always made sure to make eye contact with him to show that he was not dominant over her. Even when he cruelly struck her for standing up for and saying that she was still aligned with Mufasa, Sarabi remained unfazed. She knew exactly how she needed to act to keep her fellow lion's spirits up, and that was her true strength. That's why it was such a heartfelt reunion when Simba finally returned home and revealed that he was alive that entire time. It was also a really killer moment for Sarabi when she became the fierce lioness that everyone knew her to be. The moment came right after she learned the real truth about what happened to Mufasa and Simba. As soon as she learned that Scar had killed him and drove Simba away, the kid gloves came off and Sarabi bared her fangs. Sarabi quickly rallied her band of lionesses and they all showed the hyenas and Scar that they would not be ruled by his tyranny any longer. It was in that powerful moment that Sarabi solidified herself as the true queen of Pride Rock. Sorry, Nala. She then got to watch as her son walked the same path that her late husband had walked as Simba took his first steps as king to look over his land. And Sarabi was undoubtedly proud of her grown son. Sadly, as far as the movies go, this was the last time that the queen was shown on screen. After Simba defeated Scar toward the end of The Lion King and The Lion King One and a Half, Sarabi was no longer seen in the movie. Now, she was originally meant to be shown in the very last scene of the movie when Simba and Nala revealed their daughter Kiara to the Pride Lands, at least according to a script from 1993. However, if you've seen the movie, you'll recognize that the idea was cut since the only characters in the actual scene were Simba, Nala, Kiara, and Rafiki. But despite her not being there on screen, she was surely proud of her son Simba and all that he had become and overcome. With his life somewhat mirroring hers, at least when it came to his family, both Simba and Sarabi became a great example for the circle of life. Whether that was Disney's intention or not, though, we'll probably never know. There's no denying that Sarabi was one of the strongest queens in Disney history, but I'm curious to know, where do you think Sarabi was during The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride? And if you want to see a whole video about what I think happened to her, be sure to let me know, as well as your thoughts in the comments below.